If you're looking for a new invoice financing solution for your recruitment business, I highly recommend Zodek. Zodek have a relationship-based, courteous approach and a professional approach to working with their clients. So whether you're a startup or an established business, uh, they offer you a range of financial and um, back office support solutions that will suit your business and are specific to your requirements and your goals. Whether you're in the tech sector, education, recruitment, manufacturing, engineering, whatever sector you're in, they look after the majority of them. So get in touch with Zodek at zodek.com or on the link below. Welcome back to another episode of Rec Talk. I'm your host, Nitin Sharma, the founder of Rectals.io. Uh, Rectals is the only hold of market directory of recruitment supply chain within the recruitment sector. So if you are a talent acquisition or recruitment business owner or somebody who has a decision making capacity within a recruitment business, ops manager, sales director, whatever, uh, head over to Rectals.io. You'll get the whole of market view on all the tech that's out there, all the different suppliers, everything that you need to run your recruitment business, but also to level up your recruitment business. Now, that might mean you want to look at a new CRM, might mean you want a new automation software might mean that you want to change your marketing uh, or invest in marketing. Well, rectools.io is the place to do that. Um, you'll see set slightly different today. I'm back on the old mics and everything else. Uh, that's because I have the distinct pleasure of being hosted up in Leeds uh, by a good friend of mine, Chris Chris Holland of Kitto. Chris, thank you, first of all, for hosting me. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. Appreciate you uh, kind of giving up half your busy day because I know you are really up against it at the minute. So um, what we really wanted to, to kind of um, delve into today is, yes, it's another recruitment marketing uh, podcast, um, but really more to kind of educate those who need the education as to kind of why recruitment marketing is so important or specifically why marketing is so important now within a recruitment world. Uh, I've been saying on the podcast for months and months and months now in many episodes that it's recruitment is not a sales job. It is a marketing job. Uh, you know, to be a efficient consultancy uh, and to provide the value that you, people expect and people being your paying customer or your clients, you need to focus on your marketing efforts. And when I walked in, there's, uh, and I'll, I'll pop it over here, but when I walked in, there's a big sign on the wall there that says recruitment is a marketing job. So I know I'm in good company. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll stop talking now, mate. First of all, thanks for, uh, for, for hosting us. That's really kind of you. Yeah. No, it's great to have you come. Appreciate you making the journey. It's a trek, isn't it? From uh, <laughs> from the the Midlands. I don't mind. I don't mind. I slap on a couple of podcasts, and uh, you know, before I know it, I'm here. Into the badlands yeah. up north, but yeah, no, it's good, and and it's like, I think that when we've chatted before, it's seen that we're obviously on a similar wavelength with this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you know, when I set up the business, recruitment is a marketing job was the the strap line that I've had since day dot really and i think you're you're well positioned to say that very similar to myself in that you were a recruiter and a good recruiter at that and on the tools so it's not a case that you're sitting there as a you know marketing graduate who's gone to you know the rory sutherland school of marketing and popped out the other end going i know how to fix everyone's problems with marketing it's no no i did this yeah and now i can see the world's changed and for some reason we don't seem to well, we're not we. There's a lot of people that don't seem to have accepted that. Yeah, and I think that's that, that number's grown all the time. But yeah, my background was um, I was a I, I came. I mean, I left uni and left uni and and googled like what's the job I can make the most money with these qualifications and recruitment sort of started pinging up everywhere. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, moved and started in sort of I suppose what well people call it exec search, but it's not exec search because you never place a CEO, but it's sort of mid to senior level like perm retained stuff, but working internationally. Did that for two, three years and, and did all right with it. But like me genuinely, and I suppose it's longer term, what's led to this really is like, just got a bit like that hamster wheel just like ground me down a bit of that that method that we all know and love, which is you find a candidate, interview them, spec them out, spec them out, spec them out. Someone bites, get them interviewed. You don't place them, but you pick up a vacancy. You work on that vacancy, you fill it. Mm -hmm. Then you maybe start a relationship and it's just like, you know, mad numbers game that's just like, ah. Oh. So I basically went to Jacket, got given the opportunity to move into a marketing role because I said I wanted to do something a bit more creative and that's sort of where it started. Mm. Um, so I was with a, a business for, you know, a number of years. Um, we did some really cool things for marketing. I ended up as RevOps director and covered sort of data tech um, for what was then, you know, 100, 120 person business and then mm -hmm. left to set up Kito last year. But I think my my background you know when we speak to clients and stuff about marketing like 
you know, everyone wants ROI. Yeah. Of course they do. And everyone wants leads. But my my counter, not counter argument to that, but like part of it is all is that the stuff you're doing isn't working. Like you pre- you're pretending that it is. Yeah. Like and 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 it it it, it, it you know it, it it is a it, it can work eventually. Obviously, we've all built businesses from all this stuff, and it works well. But like I said this to James Osborne on a previous episode, though, right? A broken clock's right two times a day. It, it doesn't mean it's a good clock, right? You can do something enough times, and it will pay off. Yeah. Right? That doesn't mean that that's the best or the most efficient way to do it. No, and and like and now I think that you know when I talk about marketing, and particularly when I'm speaking to recruitment owners and 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 people of that ilk. I always say that like in recruitment, marketing is a slightly different thing to what it is in other B2B industries because mm-hmm. it's realistically sales enablement. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. not like, you know, if you're it's marketing- bottom of the, It's sort of top of the sales funnel. It's all part of the It's top of the journey, sales funnel right. until four fifths of it. But yeah. like if we're selling t-shirts, you know, then I can market and I can flog loads of t-shirts. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're selling a, a, a SaaS or a tech tool or something like that, that's all, you know, whatever, sign up, get a demo, yeah. whatever, or I can get it yeah, yeah, done. Yeah. But I can't make placements. Mm-hmm. So what I can do is, the most I can do realistically is, you know, the, I can maybe get an inbound retained lead. That's the yeah. best thing probably that I could get my hands on. Or an inbound, like, you know, app, I don't know, whatever they can be. But like, so it's all about like with marketing, it's all about rounding off the stuff that you're doing from sales and adding to that and making it so that when that recruiter picks up the phone, like they still pick up the phone, by the way. You know, it's not all, I'm not saying that it's all about inbound stuff, but that recruiter will still pick up the phone, but they'll be calling fewer people with more interesting yeah. things to talk about. It won't feel like a cold call. Well, it's because it's not, but that's because it's, cause it's yeah. not because someone goes to you like, you know, you you and I have, have got, I think, similar ways that we've managed to, you know, build the businesses that we're working on. But like, it's when it's when they pick up the phone and they go like, oh, I know you from that. I saw you, I follow you on LinkedIn. Yeah. Or like, I watched that video you I've did. I've seen your content. I've seen your stuff. Yeah. I saw you at that place. I yeah. saw you doing that. Yeah. yeah. They feel like there's a familiarity there. So it, it kind of, the trust barrier is is lower. Yeah. You know, if there's somebody who, who likes to kind of build trust before a communication or... Which everybody does, by the way. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You do I, for I, I, recruitment because you know what you're getting into. Yeah, well, right? yeah, yeah. That, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's it's a funny one, right? Because I think we have this tendency as as kind of humans, really, I think, to kind of look back and romanticize about things, right? Um, ice cream always tasted better when we were little. McDonald's was the elite food when we were little right yeah. and then as you grow up and you kind of realize that it's not the quite the case but you romanticize about these things when when actually when from back in the day yeah and i think that's where we are right now is you've got a lot of people who made a lot of money and um kind of grew successful businesses when recruitment was a different type of job yeah. where it was a transactional service job you have a vacancy i have a skill set you can't be asked to, to, you know, you could probably fill the job yourself. You can't be asked to for any number of reasons. Allow me to do that for you. Yeah. And the way to then enable that was always to just bash the phones, keep ringing, keep ringing, keep ringing. There's plenty of candidates, plenty of clients. You'll make it, you'll make money, right? And there's people that grew million pound businesses off the back of spec projects and cold calling. Well, and but that's not how it was all, it, that, that doesn't, like th- that's the romanticization of it because the reality was there were times where they're, but it's got a bit, it, you know, oh, I've got a squeaky bum time. Are we going to make payroll? There were times where it was, shit, we've grown way too fast, way too quickly. There were times where it's like, no, we need to pivot markets. But we almost forget about that. And I think the market we're in today and the difficulty that's been in the last 18 months is there is no playbook. There is no, you, you, there is nothing to refer to to say this is how to survive in 2025. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, and I think, and for me, like, I think it's about, you can think about it as like layers of education, mm. like about the recruitment sector for prospects, be it clients and in-demand candidates. So, you know, I speak to people who have been there at the, you know, who were there in those sort of glory days in the 90s. And, you know, in Leeds, there's, you know, it was Ellis Fairbank is where it all started. In London, it's all S3 in it. And then there's a million people who started from businesses that were started by those companies. And mm-hmm, this is... Mm-hmm these big beautiful pyramids that have, that have grown <laughs> out of out of it. And like, you know, but I've spoken to people who've been in those situations and said like, right, when you were cold calling, 
How many times a week would you have to explain what recruitment is? Like what what you what it is? Yeah. And it was like, you know, multiple. So you'd, and, and, and in that instance, like you pick up the phone and someone goes, right, you're struggling with hiring. Yeah. Well, guess what? I've got people for you. Yeah. You what? This is a nightmare. Like this is, this is the hardest part of my business. You can help with that. Yeah. All oh, right. Sound. Well, yeah, of course I want you to help with me. And please, please, please. Mm-hmm. Obviously now it's so much more saturated that like the level of education now is like, I don't want to know that you're a recruiter. I need to know that you are a recruiter who has this amount of experience, has worked with companies like me before, has experience yeah. in my niche, adds value to the market, is respected, is trusted, and that's has what a following. over time where you've had bad experience after bad experience after bad experience. So it's almost like we kind of did this to ourselves. Yeah. Right? We, we almost created this monster our, our, off our own kind of like ill doing. And now the correction, in my opinion, certainly the correction to that is to go, you need to pivot your business. It's not a sales business. You're a consultancy. Yeah. So solution sell, consultative sell, don't the spe- specking a candidate out is not is not solving anyone's problems you know we yeah. know that but we do that because it's sort of like oh i don't know any other way to do it well, well it, it it's not solving anyone's problems like i don't want to like contradict myself but until it is and, and and by that i mean you know if you're pursuing like an abm model and you know what accounts you want to work with you know what's going on in those accounts you know mm-hmm. who those people are like if you've really got your finger on the pulse in your market and you are that central point in your market. And you actually know that that person from company A sales director has just left and you genuinely have found someone who could genuinely be a great fit for it. And you already have a relationship for with that person. And you can go, look, I know all the history about you. I know all this mm-hmm. history about this person. I genuinely think this could be great for you. That is specking, it's specking, but it's in the introdu- right yeah, yeah. introducing a candidate to an opportunity at the right time where a client might go, and they might still tell you to do one, but they might go, Mm. Oh well, uh, yeah. I actually can't really argue too much with this, and of course, like, well, well this this is right, but that's that's the, the difference is though that the the, the the kind of the brand effort and the marketing effort you put in beforehand, yeah, stops that from being just a some guy's just knocked my door to try and sell me a, a washing machine, yeah. Like, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, the, the, that that's that's the equivalent of that is is that kind of blind spec market. But the reality is that because people aren't. Recruitment business owners haven't got as I, as I always say this though that, that there's, there is no playbook anymore. Yeah, and this is why I think a lot more people are now open to turning to marketing and going. Actually, I get it. I need people to at least have an inkling as to who I am and why personal brand is such a big thing now because people have accepted that this is a very effective and efficient way to get your market to really understand who you are and what you guys are about. So that when you do have that candidate that just so happens to be the right place at the right time and you present them, it's not just a one-off transaction. All right, fine, on this occasion we'll work with you. Yeah. Don't you fucking call me again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I agree. And and there isn't a playbook, but then like, you know, if we're not, if there isn't a playbook for recruitment in 2025, but then like, why don't we maybe think about looking at, I don't know, like every other sector in the world? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. for a bit of inspiration that maybe hasn't, you know, sprung to life in the last 30 years or mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. that has matured maybe a lot more quickly. There's, there's a lot of places that we could look to, right? And like, I always think the, 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 the legal sector and the, the professional services accountancy sector are too slept on in that sense because yeah. you've got, you don't see your lawyer as a salesperson and you certainly don't see an accountant as a salesperson, but they have the business develop. There mm-hmm. are no, very very few have the luxury of having a business development team, right? Mm-hmm. These guys are fee earners, they charge for their time and the work that they do is at such a good quality that they then ask for recommendations, referrals or naturally receive that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I'm kind of like, that's a model that we know works. Mm-hmm. Why don't we replicate that in the, in the, in the recruitment sector? Well, I think, le- yeah, and I think it's the, the legal space is, I mean, it's, it's not to go down a legal route too far, but like, the legal space is an interesting one because I actually think they've gone in the opposite direction in the sense that, you know, my understanding from people I've spoken to in this is that it's actually only become acceptable if it is acceptable for people in senior legal positions like barristers and things like that to even think about putting themselves out there practically because it was seen as a bit like, Ugh, it's a bit yeah. of an ick. Yeah. I think previously and now it's yeah, encouraged yeah, yeah. to be that sort of owner and business. So they're sort of coming into this world to say, like, ooh, like, you know, how could I do this? This is exciting. And, you know, one thing that connects them and recruitment is is like personal brand and the mm-hmm. importance of that. And I think you're actually starting to see a bit more of that in those professional service sectors. It's a funny one because like 
in in the US market, I only learned this recently, but in the US market, recruitment is seen as a um, profession. Mm. You choose to go into recruitment yeah. and there's qualifications that you do before you're allowed to step into that world. And then certainly in the the kind of the higher end, um, whether it's retained or whether it's kind of head entry or whatever, that's how they do business. They're not sat there cold calling and bashing the phones all day long. It's all about networking and so on and so forth. And it's, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm you know. Oh, shit. Oh, what was that? Sorry. I don't know. That's all right. Let me just get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> well, while we're, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave that in there. <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about Zodek while uh, Chris is answering the, the the phone and the door rather. Awesome. Is it? <laughs> there you go. So Zodek are partners with Rectools and Zodek are an invoice financing back office company. They do a range of different services for your recruitment business. So that could be things like a just client handling your own credit control all the way through to invoicing and back office and kind of helping you with things like your payroll contracting and paying them on time and timesheet management and everything else in between. So if you are in the market looking for a new payroll, no, payroll provider, sorry, a invoice financing provider, I will highly recommend Zodek to you guys. Uh, the link will be in the comments. Uh, yeah, so we're back. Yeah, so, so no, no, that's fine. I like, mate, I like this sort of stuff. It always, it always, um, I, I used to kind of panic and be like, oh, I'll pause that there and put it back in. But we're all human, man. It's like, that's like kind of shouting at your kids because you're on a Teams call. Yeah. Like, nah, come in. I've got kids. Like, here's what yeah. it is. Come and say hi to like whoever I'm speaking to. Yeah. Just one of them things. Like, you run an office, parcels get delivered. It's a laptop for a new start next week. So there it's a go. good delivery. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, good. Um, yeah, sorry. As I was saying, is in, in America, then, you know, the, the market is is different and in that there are no they're not cold calling and stuff so if i'm a business owner which i am and you're a business owner which you are and we just happen to be chatting and i'll go do you know i'm really looking for like a salesperson you're gonna go i've got a great recruiter in fact here's his card reach out to him tell him i sent you yeah, yeah that's how they do business yeah and so for, we look at it from the uk market as like oh the us market is really slow and that's why we can clean up out there but I, I worry that we're taking our bad practices of cold calling and aggressively kind of chasing business into that into that market and almost diluting the the value add that they... The reason the fees are higher there is because it's not a transactional job, mm. right? It's a professional service job. So we sit here and get all fucking excited about the fact that I'm going to move to America, I'm going to recruit there. Mm. The fees are 35 40%. Yeah, mm. because they work in a different way and it's perceived in a different way. Mm. So if you're going to take your UK attitude of... I'll bash the phones, stack them high, sell them cheap, all the rest of it. You're, you're going to ruin a market that's actually quite profitable for everybody. Yeah. That's my concern anyway. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I mean, I think that, I mean, in my experience with the US is that, you know, in, in clients that I work with, that we work with now are, are, are doing great things in the US and um, business that I came from before we used to do an awful lot of work in the US and we found that things were, I think that we found that things were fa were faster on the whole, you know, because of the thing, you know, so the notice periods and everything like that are out there. And like, mm. it's a rich seam to tap into, but yeah, I, I, it's, it is about trust. And I think that, you know, Americans, not to paint with too broad a brush, but like, and naturally tend to be more open-minded, more receptive. And, mm -hmm. and so I actually think that, you know, in this sort of marketing context, like, if you are looking to get into the American market, then like the place that you can, a, pl a thing that you can really, really do well with is on marketing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Because that that's the really thing that they will judge that. you by, right? Yeah. We we use the whole concept of like shop windows and websites, your shop window and that kind of thing. That, that's that been the case in the US market for decades. And so that's where these things are really important. You know, everything. And then marketing isn't just the coloring in stuff and making your website look pretty and your posts and stuff. It's your tone, your voice, your brand. That's the stuff that's going to attract and entice your new customers, right? Yeah. So tell us a bit about some of the, because you, I, I know, I, I know that you guys do some really cool shit. Yeah. Give us, give us some tasters of some of the cool projects that you guys have worked on and completed or are currently working on. Yeah. I mean, I think that that, that idea of just, I mean, happily, yeah, I'll tell you why we're good. But like, but also <laughs> then going back to that point there, like that shop window thing, like your website is your shop window, but it's on the biggest and longest street in the biggest mm -hmm. and most convoluted city in the world where there's, you know, a billion other shops. And I would like really recommend that people 
get on their good. Like it's amazing how many recruitment owners and businesses that we speak to who've got websites and we say like, oh, give us access to your Google Analytics. And they say, oh, what's that? We haven't got access to that. I don't know how to get onto that. Mm. And then I go, um, all right, well, how much traffic does your website get each month? And they go, mm, I don't yeah. know. But then eventually I do get that stuff and I do read that stuff. And then the amount of traffic it gets is is 20 visits a month. Yeah. And you're like, so it's all well and good having your website as your shop window, but like, unless you're going to invest a hell of a lot of time into decent SEO and building up communities and doing all that stuff, then like people aren't going to find you. You've but got to put it in could be a lot them. more as well because then it's not just about oh, well, there's only 20 people coming on my site. Right, but those 20 people could be paying customers or placeable candidates that are going to drive you revenue. Now, they've landed on your site, but you've not given them any reason to to sort of stay. That's something to consider too, right? Yeah, it is. It is when they're there, like conversions and doing all that sort of thing. But I still think that, like, I think that in marketing generally, people get too bogged down with the mm. stuff, mm. the stuff side of it. And actually the way that, the way that you have the impact is the distribution. And, you know, it's a good argument. If you've got a marketing resource in house, then they should be focused on the things that are generating the return on investment mm -hmm. and not necessarily the making of the things that you're going to distribute. So give like a working example is like salary surveys, salary guides, right? Like people do like them. People do want them. They are good. Like there's a lot of them out there mm -hmm. and you can do good ones. You can do bad ones. Um, but let's say, for example, you're doing a good one. Like, you find that, like, they're a ball egg to put together. They take ages. A lot of effort, Loads of a lot hassle. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got a marketing exec or a marketing manager, and you go, right, do a salary survey. And they spend months writing the survey, collecting all the information, putting it all together, branding it up, getting it into a document, showing it to all the different teams, getting feedback. They like this. They don't like this. They do like that. It takes months and months and months and months. By the time it's done, they put it on a landing page, put it on the website, they post about it on social two or three times. And they're just sick of it and they're knackered and they're just like they've put all they've used all their effort up on that thing yeah, to do that at that yeah. point that, that fatigue kicks in of like, but then just... it goes oh but nobody but 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 it don't oh the salary survey was shit it didn't work yeah and so but it isn't it wasn't it was actually great it's just that the thing that you actually really now now is when the effort needs to start yeah and it's why like my i and and so you know so obviously now i'm going to say this but my argument would be like outsource the making of it and then you get this shiny new thing you're dead excited about and you sprint to get it out to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. It's the same reason why I would never advise having consultants making content. Like never, like a consultant, a recruitment consultant's job, recruitment may be a marketing job, but that doesn't necessarily make a recruitment consultant a fantastic a copywriter yeah. or videographer. Like they get some people better than others, but it's not their job to write content. Mm -hmm. They should know what their market, they should come in at the start. They should know what their market's about. They should give you the ideas, the experts, go away and make it, create it, do whatever they want to do for it. Give the recruiter something back and then go, have at it, mate. Get stuck in, use this. Your effort starts now because you can't use that excuse. That's a really, really good point. Really good point, actually. Because, yeah, you're right, actually. I mean, I do everything, right, from recording the podcast to editing to then doing all the thumbnails and then re-editing and then posting them out. And, yeah, you're right. There are times where by the time... I'm really excited about a podcast that I filmed. By the time I release it, the buzz has kind of killed off for me by that yeah, point. Yeah, you've heard it like, 10 times. And you yeah, to go through and it. I'm just sort of like, let's just get this out and move on to the next one. And yeah. it shouldn't feel that way. It shouldn't no. be that way. And so, yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it, it is, that happens. And, and yeah, again, when I ran my recruitment agency, same thing. I was the one that would create the content and stuff like that. But then when I would create stuff for the other guys to post, they'd be fucking flying with it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're so excited by it. Yeah, Whereas should. for me, I'm just like, oh, if I have to look at that PDF one more time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's it. And it's because like, that's, that's, and it's a little bit like where you find like your marketers in house, like they, sh yeah, they should be doing that stuff. That's what they should be there for. And, 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 and then be working as that sales enablement function to them, you know, partner with a consultant to help them get it out there. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. the foil for those conversations. You know, if I write, you know, look, you're working in, I don't know, you're working in HR tech is my market. I recruit in HR tech, right? Let's start with the end in mind in terms of the process that we go through, which sort of, I suppose, answers a bit of your question about like what we do. But right, let's start with the end in mind about like, right, what do you want to do? So you're recruiting in HR tech, you want to get into HR tech companies, mm -hmm. right? Let's say you probably don't want to get into the biggest ones in the world because they're too hard to work with. Yeah. So you want to go for those probably tier two ones 
growing, got a bit of cash, not got a really established HR function and TA function because they're going to put you through bureaucracy and it's going to be a hassle. Right, yeah, yeah. Cool, right. So we've got 10 of them. Uh, which five of them have, have got, you know, the most, who are going to be the best to work with? We're going to write, we're going to find these five, right? We're going to write an article about the best five companies in HR tech that we should be the most excited about in 2025. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it about those five companies, right? We're going to write this article. We're going to try and get quotes for it during the process of it. So mm -hmm. we can start that relationship there. But even if they air you, then you've done it. Then you give that to the consultant. You say, look, here's your article, mate. Um, here's five LinkedIn posts you can post about it with tagging all the people in. Here's three emails you can send about the article. Here's a link to it on the website. Yeah. That's your pack. Go and get after it. And you go and you and you use that as a foil to start those conversations. So, you, you know, cold call, absolutely cold call. But I say, you know, look, Hi, you knitting. Like I'm, um, I am. I specialise in recruiting in the HR technology space, and I really wanted to get in touch with you um, because you know you're someone who's caught my radar. I've written an article about these five companies that I'm really excited about for next year because I just think you're doing some really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd love to hear a bit more about it. I'd love to fact check if what I've put is correct. If there's any more detail or depth you can give me, like yeah, have you got any ready time? for a follow up article. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, yeah, and just well, like, and, like yeah, yeah, and, and yeah. Just, you let's have a chat and you go like, article. in fact, let's let's come see on if we podcast, can, on, yeah, podcast, right? Yeah. Or let's record a team team meeting or uh, whatever. In fact, I'd love to do a webinar with you. Yeah. I'm connected to a lot of people in the space that that you guys fish out of the pond of. Let's do a webinar. And 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 this is still like. This is still sales, but it's sales enabled by marketing. You get that person on the phone and you know, you can follow like a pretty, you know, we love a script. What's really funny is you've given away like an easy sort of five grand worth of consultancy advice. Right? <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Cause yeah, yeah. there'll be people sat there going, oh man, yeah, shit, I didn't even think of that. Well, and But it's sort of like, that's the stuff that you should be doing because A, it's effective. And B, it's fun. It's yeah, better than hearing, hearing 50 no's before you finally hear a yes. 100%. And then the candidate not start. 100%. And, 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 but if the candidate doesn't start, if you've got this great relationship with someone, it wasn't all hinged on that one role being hired exactly. for, then they get it. Yeah. This happens. Yeah, That's yeah. fine. Whereas if it's like, the only reason that I ever wanted to talk to you was because of this candidate. Yeah, and you're then fucked you fucked that up. Get yeah, out yeah, of my yeah. Face. And they've Don't missed me about. Don't call me again. That That's means it. So yeah. If you, you know, your candidate is your product, can backfire But you well. change that subservient relationship of client and supplier to, look, I'm a market expert. This is what I do, right? And I've given you a range of different things of, of value add for this value exchange to occur. And, and I've earned my seat at the table with you to sit here and actually say, can I have five minutes? Because I've spoken to this candidate who I think would be fantastic for you guys. Or we're not hiring at the minute. Okay, that's fine. Just hear me, hear me out yeah, yeah. and talent bank this person. Actually, do you know what? I like and trust you because you do know your market. You do provide me value above and beyond the usual, just only ring me when I'm ha when my vacancy page is live and when that's not, you know, or my, my banners on saying hiring, you know, that's the difference. It's sort of picking those clients and going, let me, how do I break in with these guys properly and effectively? And for some more f free consultancy advice, like something that I always say to clients, um, particularly those working in certain niches, um, is say going from saying you to we. Mm -hmm. So if I'm working in that HR tech space and I'm speaking to you as a as a as a potential client, mm -hmm. I don't say yeah hi Nita, I'm a recruiter specialising in HR technology. I think that was in my example, so ignore that. But like <laughs> we're both in the HR tech space. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. We're peers. You know, I build businesses in HR technology. That's what I do you have a business in HR technology. Here's all the stuff I've learned from all the other businesses that I've built in HR technology. And, you know, here's all the stuff that I've learned and I'm doing and I'm making and creating and stuff at the moment. And you know what? Like, so I bet some people will watch this or listen to this and think, well, hang on, yeah, I've got all these recruiters who've got six months experience. They can't go out and say that. They can't go out and say that. Well, make the learning process part of your BD process mm -hmm. as well. I'm in the HR tech space. Like, I've only been in it a few, a little, a few months, but cut me and I bleed it. I love it. I'd love to speak to you and get your insight and your thoughts and your knowledge about it because like, I would have learned so much Rectal. from you. Right. right. This time last year, or the, we're recording in October, this time last year, I've gone to Recruitment Expo. No one really knows who I am, short of the handful of people that I deal with. This time, 12 months later, everybody knew who I was or knew what this was. Yeah. Right. Because I sat there and I went, I need to start a podcast to meet these guys. Yeah. To absorb knowledge from these guys right 
I always say to people, look, because I get tagged a lot with like, oh, knitting will know about this, knitting will know about that. And I'm like, listen, I don't know anything. All I do is platform those who do know their stuff. Yeah. That's, that's my part in this world. But the things that you pick up along the way and the things that you learn along the way and the fact that you're, I'm, I'm constantly on people's LinkedIn screens and, you know, I'm with people that they respect and they like immediately shines better on me. I, a year ago, I didn't know anybody in this, in this, in the rec tech space, yeah, the supply yeah. chain world. I didn't know anybody. Yeah. And, but I use that same, very same thing of like, look, I want to learn. Yeah. Right? I, I've set up this whole market directory. I want to be able to talk about Kitto. Yeah. Tell me about Kitto. Yeah. Come on the podcast. And tell me about you guys. Let me learn about you guys. And yeah. then I can learn about this person and then that person and then that person. And then it gets to a point where you're like, no, no, I am a market expert in this area now. Yeah. Now the value and conversation is different. So yeah, when you've got recruiters that are yeah, six months in and they can't, yeah, do you know what? Fundamentally, people aren't assholes. Yeah, yeah. If you had your six month, rec- six month experienced recruiter pick up the phone to your prospect client and say, listen, I want to learn more about this sector. I, you, I want to do business with you guys. And I appreciate that there's no reason for you to do business with me right now. Yeah. Right? So yeah. can I have some time? I'm writing an article about you guys. Can you just give me some key points that you'd like to have in- included? Yeah. And then when you've written the article, get back on the phone to them. Great news. The article did really well. It's actually driving a lot of traffic to our site. Um, my, my connections have personally increased. Yeah, we've backlinked it yeah. to your site as well, by the way. How, yeah. Yeah, and all that. Yeah. Can we do some more? Can we do something else? Can we? How do we take this a bit further? Yeah. And you haven't at any point at this point spoke about, I see you're hiring for a... Yeah. You know, I specialize in the recruitment for... But, so can we do business? But there's two parts to that, yeah. And I think the first part of what you said earlier, like going back to it is... You're an expert in the market, not an expert in the thing. And I think that's a really crucial differentiator that, again, sometimes recruitment business owners can be a bit skeptical about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, well, why am I posting about HR tech? Like, I don't know how to build an HR technology business. I don't know how to code. I can't do that sort of thing. And it's like, well, well, no, you don't. And that's fine. And no one expects you to do. And one of the things we always say is you've always got to speak from a point of authority. Mm. But it's literally your job to be able to contact five other people who are doing that and you facilitate them having a conversation about how to do this and, and what to do It's key in the to journey. make that message clear because you know it rocks the other way. I worked at Michael Page and would be fortunate enough to work with some really, really cool people, but also some people that worked in very specific, you know, high sort of exec search roles yeah. or like sort of, you know, tax specialism roles. And these guys would walk around as if they were an accountant themselves. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they would yeah. walk around as if they are a CMO or CEO themselves. And you'd kind of be like, you recruit with these people. You are not one of these people. Yeah. So, you know, you, yeah, yeah. You, and that has just as much a detrimental effect. You can't, like, I wouldn't sit here and wouldn't dream of sitting here and being like, well, I'm in the marketing space. No, I'm not. I use marketing to leverage what I do. But I, I'm not, like I'm here to learn from you. I'm not here to tell you yeah. what works and what doesn't work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and again, like it's it's really important. You can be that consultative way to say, well, so and so is doing it like this. Are these guys yeah. doing it like this? And this is it. And see, you know, your point about you can have those conversations at no point. There's a sales pitch like that's you know that doesn't have to last long though. There's a you know a real easy conversation can go from that to say like. You know, I've written this about you and, and you're in the market and blah, blah, blah. How's that, you know, how are things going at the moment? Mm-hmm. Cool, how's the market generally? Is it expanding, is it contracting? Oh, right, cool, it's expanding, right. How does that fit with you guys? You know, are you getting bigger, are you growing with it? Yeah, you are, right, cool. What does that mean then? Like, mm. you know, where where's where's your big growth areas? Like actually asking these open questions and then going, look, right, we've been chatting for an hour. You just told me all this stuff. It sounds mega. I got in touch with you because I'm excited about you. Like, I do do this. Like, this is the thing that I do that you've just told me that you sort of need. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. like, you know, I have done it for like X, Y, and Z and A and B and C. And, you know, we got some really good stuff with them. Like, is that worth a chat, do you think? And, the, you know, it's rare that they're going to go, nah. Even, no, if, we're got, okay. even yeah. if they've got another supplier. Yeah. They'd be like, well, I've just spent like an hour with you and like you sound, you seem really sound. You seem yeah. really like you've invested all this into me. Like it's only fair. Like, and it comes it's, right back to that, that 
real and it's like what you're doing with 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 all your stuff and the podcast but all the rec tools and everything like that and like the fundamental part of marketing is like adding value and it's value all exchange about value. i, I yeah. call it value exchange yeah, right yeah yeah i do enough things for you for you to really feel obligated to do something back for me yeah exactly that's yeah. that's that's how the world works yeah you know that's how friendships are built that's how relationships are built you know that's how strangers become friends yeah you know you think back to every sort of interaction that you've ever had with people. It's all about value exchange. Nobody does anything for anybody for free no. and for nothing, unless you're in recruitment. Yeah. Because then I'll look at your job spec, I'll find you a shortlist, I'll speak to 50 people, narrow that down to five, send you that shortlist, and still have you say no thank you and never talk to me again. Yeah. It's like, that, that, that's a mad, that's madness. Yeah, it is. But then at the same time, but then to get that, to get that transaction, going you've made a transaction so you like you said they're like you never you haven't given them anything no. apart from you've tried to flog them something that they actually like begrudgingly might need sometimes and they don't owe you fuck all. exactly so, well that's so exactly I mean? yeah. that's exactly like, the point though so that's why they're happy for you to go all the way yeah, through that gone, process yeah. and then go oh we've got internal yeah so and yeah. they don't feel bad about it right? yeah and well, they shouldn't uh, really and, and there are there, there are and there are occasions where people listen to this we'll go back and be like well no actually yeah I, when i think about it when my relationship's strong with the person not because i've recruited for them before but just because i actually got on really well with them and we've gone through a process and then they have gone internal or the job's been pulled they always feel the, uh, obligated to throw me another bone well we yeah. have got this coming up yeah yeah, yeah. because they, they understand that actually in this interaction of value exchange he or she has done a lot for me and I've not delivered my end of the bargain. So now I feel obligated to do something back. And that might be an introduction to somebody else in the business who's recruiting. That might be a, listen, after this period of time, I will be recruiting again. I will call you. Yeah. Because there's that obligation to, to fulfill that transaction of value exchange. Yeah. But that's got to start on the recruiter side. Yeah. You've got to deliver value without the need for a transaction, without the conversation about a transaction. You you do it because what you're trying to show them is, listen, I will do, yeah, you know, I, I will do X, Y, and Z to support and help you, and eventually you'll do something back for me. And and yeah, and and that's that's exactly it. And you know, you can I can obviously we agree on this, and I'm you know I can sort of try and second guess the reaction that some people might have who say mm. they don't agree with it, which is often the case that yeah yeah, but that sounds like it takes ages. Yeah, but you know, there's a fundamental. I mean, I Soda's doing that. lead chasing. Well, that's what I was going to say. That, right. that, that's Soda's sitting on Indeed, finding everyone who's hiring, mapping out the hiring manager, then specking a, finding a candidate to spec to that vacancy, to that hiring manager, and then chasing it, and then sending another chaser, and then trying to get them on the phone, or to be told, we've got PSL. Yeah, Go exactly. away. Exactly. And right. like, that's all just a time consuming. And, and you know, someone who speaks about that about this is a shout out to Ben Brown, and like, he talks a lot about this sort of stuff, where by the time the vacancy's there, it's too late. Yeah. Because like... Yeah, like it's it's what I'm what I was meaning is that the traditional the traditional route of cold calling and doing all that stuff that was that was effective for all those reasons we spoke about a few minutes ago, mm. way back when, like that takes ages too. Because it all takes ages, because, right, lads and lasses out there, like you're asking for tens of thousands of pounds from people mm -hmm. and like there isn't a world in which people like give sweets. away tens of yeah. thousands of pounds off the back of a phone call. Mm -hmm. Like it's mental. And it's the same thing that, I, you know, you can say to recruiters. And again, this is like something that people might get a bit upset or could get upset about. Some people certainly will get upset about it. It's like, yeah, right, fee levels, right? Nail it to the wall. Who's our best negotiator? Who works at the highest fee levels? Oh, uh, you know, well done to so and so. They maintain an average fee level of twenty seven and a half percent this year. Unbelievable. Yeah, like mm. class. The margin is off the charts, whatever mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And they're turning down work because a client is saying to them, Yeah, yeah, we'll give you five roles, but we're only gonna work at fifteen percent. Like, take a step back from it, right? And instead of looking at 15% as a number, which is relative to whatever else, think about the amount of money versus the amount of effort you need to put in to get that money, yeah. right? If I'm working in my HR tech space and I'm looking for a sales rep in HR tech and I've worked in this for five years, I know 50 sales reps and I know this company are absolutely gagging for people. I know there's gonna be loads more work there, but they wanna work with me at 15%. I can get a shortlist together for them in four hours probably. Mm. Cause I can ring these people. Mm. Like it's still gonna be a 12 grand fee. It's actually not a bad go. Like, 
you know what I mean? A bit more perspective on it. And like, I'm not saying everyone needs to slash fee levels, but I'm just saying that like, it's, you can't a have a nuance. one size fits all yeah, yeah, yeah. attitude towards things. Yeah, no. you're absolutely right. Yeah. And in exactly the same way that, you know, that that that's how you negotiate a higher fee with your client. Look, I've already done all the back work. Yeah. Yeah, you know, exactly. I've got candidates ready to go. Yeah. So that's why I'm asking you to pay me 10% more than what you're willing to pay. Or, yeah. you know, that that kind of Yeah, that I mean that's the a, a beast in itself, right? I think it, I find it really interesting because if if recruitment is a sales job, so was car sales, right? But that's not that's not a sales job anymore either. No, you, you know, used car salesmen don't don't exist for the most part in dealerships. It's now people go in, I want to buy this car, and they spec it up to what you need and what you want. There's no sales. It's the marketing that brings the people in, and the sales part is the transaction at the end. Same with house buying. Estate agency used to be a sales job. Yeah. Again, that's not anymore either. And I think the whole concept of sales is changing because of the way people perceive it. And I think smart recruitment business owners will uh, have cottoned onto that and are sort of like, I need to reposition my proposition now. I'm not a sales business anymore. I might want to be, and obviously I want to make transactions and that's fine. But the truth of the matter is my prospects, my candidates and my clients don't want to deal with a sales consultancy. They want to deal with a recruitment consultancy. Mm. And, you know, that's the thing I need to angle into. Yeah. And so it's, yeah, it, it's good to see the people like you guys are out there that are helping businesses re, repurpose their proposition and change that voice and change that kind of uh, approach because I think the industry needs it personally. Yeah, and we do a lot of that. Like a lot of companies we work with are companies that have been, that have flown out of the blocks and they're maybe, I don't know, two, three, four, five years in and they've done really, really well but then they sort of decide that they need marketing to some degree now. And we, you know, we do like a package where we'll sort of rip everything up and start again from them. And a big part of that is thinking about A, what they're selling, their products, and, and how is that different from the market, mm. but also crucially, how are their products different from each other? Um, but then B, their tone of voice and who they are. Like, I would say it's very unlikely that you are redefining recruitment. Um, despite, or if there are, there's a lot of definitions of recruitment by now, but like, so it's, and I don't, you don't have to do that to be good. You can just lean into the thing that you're good at and talk about that and really like double down on it. And like, that doesn't even, that doesn't need to be like super, super niche either. It doesn't have to be that I'm recruiting in like, you know, nail clippers in Europe and mm -hmm. that's what I do. And that, you know, that's, that's my entire life. A niche can be lots and lots of different things, but you can have your bit of a market. Yeah. It might be salespeople. It might be a generalist sales type consultancy mm -hmm. and it might be regional, but it then you can- a brand voice. But yeah, but yeah. then you can still be that person in that That's region it. though. And I, I, I did a bit of mentoring with this, um, with Startup. They've been going just over a year and they were again looking at like, what you know, we're looking at marketing a bit more seriously now. Now we're over a year in this, that and the other. And I, I, I said to them, look, why don't you go back to your existing clients that have done business with you and ask them what they liked about you. Mm. Because you, right now you're sitting there and be like, we don't know what our kind of who we are and our identity is. Go and ask people what they saw in you or why they did business with you. Yeah. Because that might lean you towards actually that's, yeah, that's right. We didn't think of that. That's who we are. Yeah. You know, we're, we're the ones that always fill the job no matter how difficult it is. You know, we're the relentless ones or the, the dog with the bone. Or, you know, we're the ones that, you know, they really enjoyed the fact that we put on coffee mornings and yeah. things like that. So lean into that then. But that's a great place to start, right? Go to your client base and ask them, hey, we're trying to, we're doing an identity piece, a brand piece. What is it about us that made, made you transact with us in the first place and makes you continue to do business with us? Yeah, and that's the place that we would always, you know, when we're doing like strategic stuff and things like that, it's always a place that, it's always something that we, you know, we want to know and we ask them what is the perception of you and, why do people love working with you? And the answers are actually quite varied, like mm. that, that, you, that you get to that question. Um, and sometimes it is as much as like you, you sound, like we get on with you and we Your like people. you. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 that's where, you know, a big part of our service is like the video side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and showing that off is, is, is massive, like the people side of things and just showing off that, and you can do a lot with video as well, you know. You can you can shoot a video beautifully and it can still come across as quite stuffy and corporate and like, you know, not very not very you. 
or you can do something that's like absolutely mental and you can have like you can shoot it on an iPhone if you want or you can do it on whatever you want but the edit can do a lot of work for you and that can really like tell a story as to who you are and how you want to be and there's yeah there's a there's there's a huge amount of of that in sort of that storytelling type piece about who you are and what you want to be and 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 yeah that's why that's why one of the first things we did when we set up the business was spend an absolute wedge on camera gear um which is quite a scary thing to do but but that's what people want from you. They want to you, really. What they want you guys to just come in and can you just do it? Like, yeah, you know, just yeah. do it for us. Yeah, a lot of the time it is. But by the time you're you're pitching to them and you're through the door or whatever, they've they, they've already they've they've sold it to themselves. I have this theory on like I say theory on sales. It's like the psychology of sales from years ago, in that people buy based on emotions, and then they justify that emotion to buy with the facts, right? They buy from you. Because they like you, yeah, as an example. There's an emotive reason to why they bought from you. Yeah. Then they'll justify the price point or the facts, the reviews, the equipment afterwards. Yeah, yeah. That's after the fact. Yeah. But for some, again, for most sales people, we start feature dumping, product, like, you know, dumping about the, the, the spec and this, that, and the other. This is why I think this candidate is good for you. You know, they are SEMA qualified. They've worked in manufacturing accountancy and finance for seven years blah 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 blah. we haven't really found the emotive reason to buy yet yeah you know well it's that well, whole thing of... find that pitch to that and then the facts will justify the sale that's the bit where the sale comes in but that's the transaction that you know just to even get to that point that's where the marketing sits above you know and like you said four fifths of the funnel is marketing yeah and 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 that goes into the cup you know the examples of other things like the most traditional bit of marketing that any recruitment agency has ever done is the job adverts. And it's that same thing. And again, like I don't, I don't have a couple of interactions with him, but like, I don't know Mitch well, but like, I know it's obviously his bag, you know, Mitch Sullivan, who says mm-hmm. a lot of fantastic things about how to write job adverts. And it is very much about that. Like what's in it for the candidate? Is it a job advert or a job description? Like going back to your example of cars, like, it's about the way they make you feel. It's about what you associate with that brand that makes you feel. It's not mm-hmm. a list of, it's not a list of, yeah, this has got four tires that are, it's got rims that are this size. It's got, I don't know. End cap safety cars. rating of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 this. yeah, yeah. All of that stuff comes secondary. Yeah. Before it's the shots and the, the, the they try and capture the emotion. Yeah. Right? Here's but three it, German it, words at the end of it. You yeah, go, yeah, Whoa. yeah, yeah. But that's the point <laughs> is, is every, yeah. that's that's kind of marketing 101, right? You get the buy, get the buy in, make them emotionally invested first, and then they'll justify it with the facts. Provide the facts, but they'll justify it. And yeah, and and it's yeah, and that tone of voice and all that sort of stuff comes into it massively, which is yeah, a big a big thing that we really try and help people sort of find when we, what we do. This has been fun. This has been good. I think we should wrap it up because we're hitting that forty-five minute mark. Yeah. How do people reach out to you guys? You know, here's your chance. To yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so we are as I say Kitto. Um, you can find us at um, wearekitto.com. Um, my name's Chris. You can Chris with a K. Crucially, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, that tends to be where most people get in touch with me. We work on all sorts of things from laying the foundations packages, lots of branding, lots of all in outsourced in-house solutions. And we work with companies from one person up to multiple hundreds where we are their marketing resource. So yeah, if you wanna have a chat, always keen to and um, be great to have some conversations. Cheers, like this one. Brilliant, mate. Mega, Appreciate thanks, this. mate. Thank you for this. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Thanks for listening into another episode of Rec Talk. Bye. Cut that. Sweet, thanks, mate. Oh, man, all good. right. <laughs>